So today we're talking about video games again. We're doing another video game bracket, but this time we're talking about Star Wars video games. These games range from as early as the uh, 1980s through present day. So we've got a lot of games to cover here. One thing that kind of threw me off, I wasn't expecting, uh, there's way more Star Wars games than the ones we were able to feature on this bracket. There are hundreds of hundreds of them. All right, so I think for this first round, all the way through the bracket, just to get through it quickly, we're going to do a speed round. I don't know how we're going to get out of this one. I'm going to say the two games, and then I'm going to count down, and everyone's going to have to say which one they think should move on. All right, so up first, we've got Star Wars Episode One Racer up against Star Wars Starfighter. Ready? Episode One Racer. Episode one racer. Starfighter. Episode one racer. All right. Up next, we've got Star Wars The Clone Wars up against epi- the tie-in video game for episode three, Revenge of the Sith. Ready? Three, two, one. Episode three, Revenge of the Sith. Revenge of the episode Sith. Episode three. Revenge of the Sith. Specifically the Game Boy Advanced version. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, we've got Super Star Wars up against Star Wars Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2. Ready? Three, two, one. Super Star Wars. Dark Forces 2. Super Star Wars. Super Star Wars. I'm going to go with Super Star Wars because the other one's title is a mouthful. I think I'm the only person who's probably played Dark Forces 2. Up next is Star Wars Rogue Squadron versus X-Wing Alliance. Rogue Squadron. Rogue Squadron. Rogue Squadron. We've got Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic versus Star Wars Jedi Knight 2. Three, two, one. Knights of the Old Republic. Jedi Knight. Two. Jedi Knight. Uh, Knights of the Old Republic. Actually, I'm gonna go with Knights of the Old Republic. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Knights of the Old Republic. I'm. I can understand I think why. That's three for Knights of the Old Republic. We got Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic two: The Sith Lords versus Star Wars: The Force Unleashed two. Three, no. two, one. The Force Unleashed 2. Knights of the Old Republic 2. The Force Unleashed 2. I'm going to be a clown and say Force Unleashed Damn, that's 2. that's not how I saw that going. I just think the original KOTOR is so much better than the sequel. And I know that's a hot take, but I think the story... They're both not good gameplay-wise, but they are, the story is everything. And I thought they jumped the shark in uh, KOTOR 2. We've got Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy versus Star Wars The Force Unleashed 3. Two, one, Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy. The Force Unleashed. Force Unleashed. Force Unleashed. All right, well, here's another one I hope a lot of people have played. We've got EA's uh, Star Wars Battlefront up against Star Wars The Old Republic. Me and Josh are about to go clown mode. I'm about to go clown mode. <laughs> people are going to fucking Ready? hate us. Three, two, one, The Old Republic. EA Battlefront. EA two. Star Wars Battlefront. The Old Republic. EA Battlefront. I'm not. Sh- no, I said Old Republic. Did uh, Andrew, Josh, and I all say uh, EA Battlefront? <laughs> yeah. I think no, I said too. Old Republic. Star Wars uh, MMORPG is a brilliant idea. I don't think the Old Republic knocks it out of the park, but I think it, it, there's a reason it's still being played to this day. But I feel like if Star Wars Galaxy still exists, Old Republic would be irrelevant. Up next, we have Star Wars Racer Revenge versus Star Wars Jedi Starfighter. Jedi Starfighter. Racer Jedi Revenge. Jedi Starfighter. Jedi Starfighter, the name is cooler. Connect Star Wars versus Star Wars Empire at War. Ready? Three, two, one. Connect Star Wars. Connect Star Connect Wars. Star Wars. Empire at War. Connect Star Wars. <laughs> you clowns. Traitor! We've got Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga up against Star Wars Battlefront 2. Two Goliaths going head to head in the first round. Ready? Three, two, one. Battlefront Star Wars, Lego Battlefront Star Wars The Complete Saga. Lego well, Star Wars. Honestly, evil one for me. Evil one. But Battlefront 2. I feel like this was closer than you guys are making it sound. <laughs> oh, it really, really is close. This this is the only like these are the two best games on the bracket, in my opinion. I mean. I think it deserves this this spot.
What will happen to me now? The Council have granted me permission to train you. You will be a Jedi. I promise. We've got Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes and Angry Birds Star Wars. Angry Birds Star Angry Wars. Angry Birds Star Wars. Angry Birds Star Wars. We're going into the last quadrant here. We've got Star Wars Bounty Hunter up against Shadow of the Empire. Three, two, one. Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunter. Shadows Bounty Hunter. of the oh, Empire. That's three. I was going to go with Shadows of the Empire because it sounded better. I think Shadows of the Empire is a very important game in Star Wars Definitely. culture. Definitely. <laughs> I only uh, have the one experience of playing Star Wars Bounty Hunter where <laughs> I, I thought it was a survival horror game. And for that alone, I just I think that that moment is is peak pop Lou Star. I have that video. We're going to we're going to pull that shit up. I'm pissing myself right now. <laughs> really scared. Really, really. Scared. I want to know if we can at least. Ah! Why is this so scary? Shadow of the Empire is very important. But um, like it was important because there was no new movie and it was treated like a movie release. The the generation that grew up like seeing like Return of the Jedi in theaters, that like middle generation, this was their like Force Awakens. Like this was like their most hyped. They thought this was going to be their most hyped up Star Wars event because at the time, Phantom Menace wasn't really a thing yet. There was no sequel trilogy. The Shadow, Shadows of the Empire's merchandising was also crazy. Like, they went hard on the toys, on the comics, on the books. Like, it was... It felt like there there should have been a movie connected to all this marketing. I've never seen a studio go that hard on a video game's marketing. I think that alone is, like, very important when it comes to the history of Star Wars in an era that people seem to forget. Here are the only two Lego games left in the bracket. We've got Lego Clone Wars and we get Lego Force Awakens. God, that's so sad. Three, two, one. Lego Force Awakens. Yeah, I'm going to go with Lego Force Awakens. Awakens. All right, it's a sweep for Force Awakens. (laughs) We've got Jedi Fallen Order versus Republic Commander. Ready? Three, two, one. Republic, Republic Commando. Commander. Republic, Republic Commando. Commando. Yeah. And that was hard for me because like, I do love uh, Jedi Fallen Order. I played Jedi Fallen Order, but it's not hard for me to put it down just because it doesn't feel like it has any of its own ideas. To me, Jedi Fallen Order is a mix of Dark Souls and the reboot Tomb Raider games, and it doesn't really do either uh, like genre justice. I would rather play any like either of the other games than uh, Fallen Order. We've got EA Star Wars Battlefront 2 up against the original Star Wars Battlefront. EA Battlefront, Battlefront 2. EA Battlefront 2. So we've got Racer versus... Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, the tie-in game. I think, personally, I think the Revenge of the Sith game needs to move on because not only I think it's one of the most slept-on Star Wars games on this bracket, it might, is it the best movie tie-in game? It's one of the best, in my opinion. Uh, Goldeneye, I think, is the popular opinion for that. What's the popular opinion? Goldeneye. Ah, uh, that's true. Um, you remember the original Xbox PS2. So this game was just coming out before the 360. It was probably because there were so many tie-in games back then. You had, you know, SpongeBob and every movie under the sun had a tie-in game. But Revenge of the Sith, there was such hype around the game itself. And I think they nailed it. You know, they made kind of this like semi beat em up kind of Star Wars game with a, with even single player combat. And I think they just nailed it. It was a really, it's just a solid fun experience. I feel like you get your money's worth when you play it. And it, it has this kind of alternative take. So, you know, Anakin killing Obi-Wan and killing palpatine that alone was worth the price of admission i one racer here personally because i think it's really cool that the large set piece that makes phantom menace work at least in george lucas's eye is the pod racing and the fact that they knew for the tie-in game to just make that the main focus was really smart it is a very fun game and i, th- I really like the arcade version of it i'm going with uh episode three on this one though i grew up with that game sounds like it's episode three 
Up next, we've got Super Star Wars versus Star Wars Rogue Squadron. I'm going to go with Super Star Wars. I think with Super Star Wars here. Yeah, it's a classic SNES game. Yeah, and the, the, the SNES is probably one of my, uh, you know, kind of early first consoles I had as a little kid. Got Knights of the Old Republic versus Force Unleashed 2. I, I've only played one of these, so my, my opinion's going to be very hot. <laughs> Guys, it's KOTOR. What are, what are we talking about here? I've, ju- I've just never liked KOTOR's gameplay, I'm afraid. But Force Unleashed 2 was one of the biggest betrayals of my childhood. All right, so up next we've got Force Unleashed up against EA Battlefront. Josh is going to hate me here. I don't know what I'm doing here right now. I'm going to I'm gonna start with Force Unleashed because uh, for the time, it felt like a movie. You got remember in Revenge of the Sith had come out like maybe, I think, three years before it. So as a kid, still being kind of like a kid, um, it's like you're waiting for a new Star Wars movie and they're just never coming. You're looking online for episode seven. Is it ever coming? My, my heart is telling me EA Battlefront, but my mind is like Force Unleashed. My heart and mind are Force Unleashed. Yeah, well, hello? Even as much as I like the one thing that I like in EA Battlefront, as, as much as that is the one thing that I want out of a Star Wars game, like Force Unleashed is just a straight up like great game with a good story. I think Force Unleashed is what got me into Star Wars as much as I am into Star Wars. EA Battlefront, the only launch of a game that I can think of that was worse than EA Battlefront was like No Man's Sky. And it did not get better that we had to wait for the sequel to also come out in an unfinished state and then progressively get better to see what this game could have been. See, I disagree. I think it did get better. And as somebody... I'm not saying it didn't get better. I'm just saying that it never reached its potential. I played it right at launch. And I think the I had a lot of fun playing it online with my friends. Yes, it lacked a campaign mode. But honestly, after... After sitting through Battlefront 2's campaign mode, I'm like, why did I want a campaign mode? It also only had four maps. I didn't even play it. No, it had more than four maps, but... On launch? I'm positive it only had four maps at launch. Four maps on launch. It had four planets, but had multiple maps per planet. But the maps it did had was very good and... Well- Some of the best we've ever had. But there were only four of them. And it was a $60 game. I'm going to agree with Josh, even though I'm picking Force Unleashed. The, the first Battlefront by EA had a lot of great maps. And the Hoff has the best Hoff ever done, probably, in a game. The Hoff map is so much fun. Oh my god. The Hoff map is so much good. I don't know why it's not in the new game. It got nerfed. Battlefront 2 literally removed it and replaced it with probably one of the worst maps in the game. <laughs> even though I do love EA Battlefront more than most people, it just doesn't compete with... The last great single player game we had from Star Wars. I just really like the weapon system. I think the lack of heroes and villains is better. I guess that's my hot take about Battlefront in general is the less heroes and villains, the better for me. Because I think Battlefront is all about being a stormtrooper and a rebel and you're right there in the battle. If I want to swing around as Obi-Wan Kenobi, I'll play the Revenge of the Sith game that I also had because I had good star wars games i didn't need battlefront to be a game like that my expectations for ea battlefront were a little high to begin with just because it had that name battlefront but once i actually played the game and realized they weren't going for like a battlefront 3 they were going for a different kind of gameplay but still very much online multiplayer shooter focused game it just it didn't keep my interest peaked for very long i mean sure you could queue up with friends and have a good time but there was no like story mode to go play there was no like co-op missions like it was a pretty bare bones game and i did like its reward system and and upgrading and things like that but it wasn't like something you would pour you know 100 hours in in a year at least not for me it was like very much a, i played the game for like six weeks and never touched it again i know force unleashed is moving on i just wanted i feel like ea battlefront is kind of like it's the Star Wars prequels of video games where it gets a lot of hate, and I just wanted to give it its time in the spotlight and, and some positives for once. Speaking of the Star Wars prequels of video games, we've got Connect Star Wars up against Jedi Starfighter. <laughs> okay, okay, hot take. I got a hot take here. I don't care much for Jedi Starfighter, and I think Connect Star Wars is a bad game, but it's fun. Connect Star Wars is a big enough meme that I'm going to vote for it. Yeah, same. Connect Star Wars has literally probably some of the most fun I've had just because of the dance mode is absolutely crazy. And it's probably the, the game you could just give a kid and they could just play ram, ram, Rank or Rampage. You don't need, like, because it's a Connect game, any kid could play it without much skill. You sound like those uh, 2010 era, like, Microsoft E3 uh, presentations. Honestly, though, Connect Star Wars, it's, it is a bad game. <laughs> But it's such a meme that how could you not vote for it? I mean, I was going to vote for Jedi Starfighter because... <laughs> it's a better game. I, I really like Jedi Starfighter. I think it's got better flying than any of the Battlefront games. I, it's 
or any of the Lego games. It, I feel like the Star Wars video games have lacked in flying missions so much, where Jedi Starfighter was like, all right, here's an actual good one that you want to play. I feel like at the moment, um, we're all like uh, Joker and Josh's Murray. We're all saying connect Star Wars, and you just sound like, <laughs> you think this is funny? <laughs> You're laughing. Connect Star Wars is going up against one of the only good fly- flying games, and you're laughing. I agree with Josh; it's a good game, but Connect Star Wars is just—it's uh, so memorable, so memeable, so much. F- it's so much fun when you when you. I'm so low. I'm Han Solo. I'm Han Solo. I'm Han Solo. Oh oh. Yeah, we've got Star Wars Battlefront Two up against Angry Birds. This isn't even a fight. Here's the here's the one positive thing that I'll say about Angry Birds and Star Wars. Uh, the red, the red Angry Bird is dressed like Luke Skywalker, and when you tap the screen, he swipes a lightsaber. And I thought that that was pretty funny. All right, up next, we got Star Wars Bounty Hunter up against Lego Force Awakens. These are like these are like peak Lego Mace streams right here. I just feel like Lego Force Awakens should move on because, one, we're lacking Lego representation, but two, I, I just feel like the gameplay is more appealing to a wider range of people. Bounty Hunter is kind of a clunky game to go back to. Its mechanics aren't great, and I think the story is pretty decent. Like, obviously, you get to learn more about Jango Fett, and that's a character that needed to be flushed out a little bit more. Up next is EA Battlefront 2 versus Republic Commando. I'm gonna go with Republic Commando because even though EA Battlefront 2 is so much better now, it's the next Battlefront game is just going to make everyone forget that one anyway, and everyone's just going to go on to the next one. Or well, somewhat like Republic Commando is probably always going to be remembered. At least in some way, it's going to be remembered. They're not going to remember it. They're going to remember things about it. But if the next game does everything that game did but better, no one's going to remember Battlefront 2 EA. That's bold of you to assume. We're talking about EA here. Yeah. 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 I think EA Battlefront 2 is finally a finished game, and it's been out for like two over two years. Yeah. And I think that's kind of a mark against it for me, because we were talking about how disappointing EA Battlefront 1 was. Uh, I still found enjoyment in it, and I think there's still enjoyment to be found in EA Battlefront 2. But to fully enjoy it, you have to wait for the game to progress with updates over time. And it's not something like they added like DLC things that made it better. It was just, oh, they added things that probably should have been in the base game to begin with. For me, it's kind of a bra moment. And I think you're right. I think people are going to remember Republic Commando down the line. Republic Commando actually made us some of the most memorable clones. Why do you think people lost their minds when they showed the Republic Commandos in the Clone Wars? Yeah. Because it was like the first clones people actually <laughs> knew. Like you had Serve, you had uh, Fixer. You have all these great clones. All right, so it looks like we've got our Elite Eight. All right, so we've got Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, up against Super Star Wars here. I think, reading the room, it sounds like the public, or like the general uh, public opinion here is Episode 3. Uh, Revenge of the Sith should probably move on. Only thing I'm going to say about Super Star Wars again, because I think I'm probably the biggest defender of it. I'm leaning towards it too. I think it's just a really super solid platformer. And I think it's something that they could like re-release again and again, and it'll continue to find an audience. It is a game that has aged extremely well. And I think episode three as a movie tie-in game is great, but as a, as a standalone game with no kind of connection to Star Wars, it, it kind of... Like, it's a bit of a mixed bag because you do have this, like, single-player campaign, but then you've got, like, these beat-em-up levels. And then you, like, straight up have, like, like, a local multiplayer fighting game, which is interesting, but it's it's kind of a mixed bag. I will say you're right. Uh, Super Star Wars is always going to be a classic. It is a classic. It's it should be respected because it's probably the first good Star Wars game. You remember Revenge of the Sith? You gotta remember that was our. Star Wars at the time, for me anyway, the Revenge of Sith was like our generation's like big Star Wars moments. And having this is an interesting uh, bracket because I feel like you're right. Where Revenge of the Sith is kind of our generation Super Star Wars, where it was the good movie tie-in game. My bias for it comes from the fact that I mean, I did grow up with the uh, Episode Three tie-in. Episode Three is moving on specifically because of the sound Anakin makes. Ah! We got Knights of the Old Republic versus Force Unleashed. Unleashed for me. I love Kotal's story, but um, Force Unleashed was just 
G- game plays everything for me, and Kotal is not fun to play. I think it's going to be a generational thing for us. I am also leaning Force Unleashed, but like my brain is also telling me, but Kotor then evolved into like the rest of the Bioware games, like Dragon Age and uh, Mass Effect. So I feel like that legacy that Kotor has is a lot stronger than just Knights of the Old Republic as a series. But Force Unleashed was just like a dope ass Star Wars game. I think the thing about Force Unleashed was it's our it was our generation's kind of big individual kind of it was treated like a film by Wicker's film. You gotta remember it was so hyped. For Force Unleashed was so hyped it was treated like the idea of Vader having an apprentice i just remember finding so fascinating as a kid yeah push had so many memorable levels so many memorable things kotal is memorable and kotal is a good game but the gameplay to this day is just so it's so hard to return to i mean other than yeah but kotor did a lot for star wars lore too back when it came out that's another thing you got to think of is like it went way beyond where lucas went with the prequels in terms of what did the old republic look like what was that conflict between Jedi and, and Sith Lords? Like, Yeah, I agree with that. I want to apologize real quick for us just being Zoomers, but I'm also going to vote for Unleashed. Here it is. Yeah, it's the most heated debate yet. We've got Connect Star Wars versus Star Wars Battlefront 2. The negotiations were short. We've got Lego Force Awakens up against Republic Commando. Republic Commando for me. Uh, I really want to keep I want to keep Lego around as long as possible, but I feel like the argument that was made about EA Battlefront 2, Lego uh, Complete Saga is about to be out at the end of this year, and Lego Force Awakens is immediately going to be forgotten. Republic Commando is a short game, and once you play it, you're pretty much done. Lego Force Awakens... You're probably going to get more hours out of it, and you're probably going to want to replay it, where Republic Commando, you're going to play it, you're going to really like it, but then you're kind of done with it. I feel like that gameplay, uh, the LEGO gameplay in general, is so easy to follow. It's essentially, you know, like a 3D platformer, but with really kind of short linear levels, and they do a good job of diversity. They have uh, a lot of good vehicle levels, uh, a lot of great puzzles. It, they're they're fantastic games. All the LEGO games are. All right, our final four. Episode three, Revenge of the Sith, Force Unleashed, Star Wars Battlefront 2, and Lego Force Awakens. This is where the fun begins. Have we not been having fun? (laughs) No, having fun isn't hard when you've got a library card. (laughs) The first matchup in the final four is the Revenge of the Sith movie tie-in game versus the Force Unleashed. Force Unleashed is like Darth Vader's apprentice. (laughs) That was such a unique concept, whilst... Episode 3 was just a movie. I don't know about that. What about that gameplay diversity that carried this over Super Star Wars? To me, I think that's... that's If that's what we're going with here, I think uh, Force Unleashed is a pretty static game. I mean, once you get the lightsaber controls down, it's more or less just a beat-em-up with some good cutscenes and a decent story tying it all together. I think the fact that you can sit there and play local multiplayer with your brother or whatever for hours on end in a movie tie-in game is very unique. And we're not talking about the Wii version. I mean, characters like uh, Kota, Kota, you know, I'm not going to forget him. Jedi Master. That's interesting because I was going to use that as a strike against Force Unleashed. I prefer the story of episode three. Like if we're talking about story, the story of Revenge of the Sith is in the game. Also, you mentioned uh, characters that I'm not going to forget. I wanted to mention when I was arguing for Force Unleashed before the same point, but then I realized that I couldn't remember the blind master's name. So I feel like that's just a like a moot point. I play both, and I do love both games. I just feel like Force Unleashed is just it was that, it was just for me. It was like the first like you know it felt like a very unique Star Wars experience to me. But I can understand why people would rather go over uh, gameplay variety over. Uh, Force and Wish, because Force and Wish gameplay is just a beat em up at the end of the day, and I agree, it is just a beat em up. But I don't know, that time period, um, I was kind of getting older when Force and Wish came out, so I, I understood games a bit more. Wait, Force and Leash came out in 2008. I will say that the first time that I saw uh, a lightsaber being wielded backhanded, that changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> nine-year-old me just like slack jawed in the blockbuster looking at the cover like what i just wish they bring um episode three to backwards compatible on xbox because it needs it it really needs to be played um by a lot more people the next matchup is lego force awakens versus star wars battlefront 2 battlefront 2 yeah i'm with battlefront 2 here (laughs) yeah battlefront 2 has to move on (laughs) battlefront 2 is on like a schindler's list run right now 
I'll still put my one uh, futile vote into Force Awakens. <laughs> we need the Lego games. I think Battlefront 2, yeah, it is one of those games where I think some people are like, oh, that's obviously going to go through to the next one. Because a lot of people roll their eyes and think, oh, it's obvious. It's an obvious choice because everyone loves that game. But it's like, it's such a perfect game at the time when it came out. Like, as kids growing up, we, you know, just being able to play all, the, all these Star Wars characters in one game <laughs> like that was, it was so mind blowing. It had every era, it had the prequels and the originals in one game. You could play Luke and Anakin and Vader all in the same spot. Yep, and that's why it's going to win over Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. You can play as Luke in Revenge of the Sith? Uh, no, but you can play as Vader. Oh, you can play Old Man Obi-Wan. You couldn't do that in Battlefront 2. You can't play as Darth Maul in Episode 3. I feel like as much as I love Revenge of the Sith, like this one is also a no-brainer. Yeah, I think it depends what you're looking for when it comes to these two games. When it comes to like a Star Wars game. For me as a kid, I played Episode 3. I found Episode 3 way more fun because Battlefront was very fun and it is a fun game. But like after like two hours of playing it, you do kind of get bored of the repetitive command center has been lost. Command center, you know, you just gain the command points constantly. We saw Revenge of the Sith, you know, you had so many more game modes. I know, I know you got the Starfighter Assault and all that stuff. But just Galactic Conquest is great. It's just I wish they did way more game modes with that because it was just com- capture the command post. That's all it was. It didn't matter if you had the 8080s or anything like that. As long as you had those command posts, you're going to win. What this argument is for me is which of these two games are people still actively playing today? I feel like it's without question Battlefront 2. Yeah, and there's still an active mod community. I know we were talking about that earlier with... Um something else empire at war the mod community for battlefront 2 is running strong i just revi- i just wish revenge yourself was on newer consoles because it is a fun game to play with uh, friends but i guess at the end of the day battlefront 2 was way more memorable i guess revenge yourself as a game kind of probably got forgotten about the second battlefront 2 came out I guess what we could say about Revenge of the Sith making this run is that this game should get re-released in some way because there is it is a good game. I mean, it beat out Force Unleashed for a bunch of Zoomers who were like in the key uh, age group for Force Unleashed when it came out. I mean, out. it's the game that beat Super Star Wars. I'm still on the side of Super Star Wars. Episode 3, just like, that was our generation Super Star Wars, so. I mean, sure, but I never played it. I watched gameplay, that was it. That's why you didn't vote for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I guess Battlefront 2, because at the end of the day, it's the, it's, it's the monumental kind of king. It's considered king by everyone. Every time there's a new Star Wars game, what do they try to compare it to? The masses will always compare it to Battlefront 2. It's just, it's the only game where I can ask anyone who played anything on like Xbox or PlayStation and they would say that they own Battlefront 2. Except for me. Except for Jory. Yeah, Jory's the exception here. And I still have to carry the torch for Battlefront 2 because you guys are like, but Revenge of the Sith was good. And I'm like, yeah, it was, but like, this is the Star Wars game. <laughs> All right, so that's our bracket. Star Wars Battlefront 2 has taken it. Thank you, everyone, for being a part of this, and thank you for watching. If you haven't already, be sure to follow us on whatever platform you listen to podcasts. And as always, uh, be sure to check the links in the description. We should have an interesting new ad by now, as well as a uh, opportunity to check out Grievo's uh, film work, as well as his, uh, his meme Facebook page and so much more content.